first of all, thanks for the organization committee to allow me to do my presentation today. And uh, I will uh, share my screen right now. And um, so here. So normally you can see my screen, yeah. So uh, as it was said, uh, today I will talk about a uh, genome-wide association uh, study of uh, least specialized metabolites in Cessiloc uh, provenances. And firstly, specialized metabolites are chemical components not directly involved in plant development. However, they have an important role in the interaction of the plant with the environment. And in general, they are involved in resistance against biotic stresses like insect herbivory, herbivory or protections against, against abiotic stresses like UV radiation. In our study, uh, in our project, we study the Cecilo, which belong to European white oaks, and white oaks covered a large portions of European forests. And nowadays, these populations of longly species may be threatened in the context of current rapid environmental changes. Also, oaks populations displayed extensive genetic diversity and are foundation species in forest ecosystems, supporting, for example, rich insect communities. Oaks also shapes its local biotic environment, in particular through uh, the production of specialized metabolites. And in addition, specialized metabolites are evolved in resistance against pests, like for example, the oak pest, Tortrix viridena. A recent paper published uh, um, results about the resistance of oaks against this pest, and they showed that resistant oaks displayed higher concentrations of a particular specialized metabolite, a flavonoid camphorol, compared to sensible oaks. So in our project, we study the adaptive value and the evolutionary history of these specialized metabolites, and first, we need to study the heritable variation of least specialized metabolites and identify the underlying genetic basis. And in this talk, I will answer two questions. So first, are there geographical burdens of least specialized metabolite variation in white oaks? And can we perform genome-wide association analysis with low depth sequencing? So to perform genome-wide association analysis, here today we, we will combine metabolomic data, relative concentrations of leaf specialized metabolites obtained using high-throughput LCMS, with genomic data coming from low-depth sequencing, here at 10 a coverage. The two data sets were obtained from a common garden located in Eastern France, here represented by the larger triangle, and we chose to work with nine Cecilog uh, provenances from across Europe, uh, from Southern France to Northern Germany, and they are represented by the different dots on the map. And on this common garden, we sampled leaves of 225 trees. And from these leaves, we measured uh, relative concentrations of least specialized metabolites, and we were using a high throughput LCMS with a non-targeted approach. We extracted metabolites with 70% of methanol, and we run a chromatography on a C18 column with a 10 min ingredient. Molecules were ionized in a positive mode, and we used a QTOF instrument to uh, obtain the data set. Then, after that, we uh, studied the variation of leaf specialized metabolites within provenances for 225 trees. And first, we processing our data set and we clustered LCMS peaks into 287 pseudomolecules. And here on this plot, we can see the results of a pre-step per simple component analysis in which the first two axes ex each explain 33% and 20% of the variance respectively. And each dot corresponds to a tree colored by um, provenance of origin, which correspond to the same color on the map. And you can see that this analysis reveals no differences uh, between provenances and is confirmed by an analysis of variance not presented here. Also, some pseudomolecules even displayed by modal distribution, like represented in the figure below, 
And in the x-axis, sorry, we have our uh, provenances. In the y-axis, we have the log signal intensity of the same SCMS peak for the 224 individuals. And here we can observe that we have a bimodal distribution in all provenances. Then for the genomic data set port, we uh, used genome-wide Illumina sequencing, and we already sequenced a pilot set of 72 individuals at a 10x depth. We, are remaining, we have remaining individuals, 153, that are still ongoing sequencing. However, our, our pilot set, set allow us to do a pilot study to test if 10x sequencing depth is sufficient for obtain, to obtain uh, good genomic data for GWAS. So as I said, this pilot study was done because we know that we have two main drawbacks uh, for low uh, depth sequencing, is that we have a lot of missing data and we can have also genotype calling errors. So to do that, we genotype nearly 2 million SNPs in 72 individuals sequenced as 10x. And we used technical replicates for two individuals to investigate the effect of sequencing depth on missing genotype and cause error. And first, to quantify missing data, for each SNP, we compared genotypes of the five technical replicates and counted the number of SNPs with zero to five missing genotypes. On the plot, the x-axis is the number of, of missing genotypes between replicates, and on the y-axis is the number of SNPs with zero to five missing calls. And we can take this for two individuals, the represented here in blue and black. And you can see that at 5x, uh, at 5x, sorry, we have almost 300,000 of SNPs with one missing genotypes. And from 10x, you can see that we are close to no missing data and also at 15x. Then we computed the proportion of identical genotypes among five technical replicates at 10x. And overall, at 10x, 78% of all SNPs have identical genotypes in all five technical replicates. Given these results, we choose to sequence all our individuals at 10x death. At 10x death. Uh, then uh, we created a prelim preliminary SNP matrix with our 72 individuals, and we used a software called Bayesian Genotype Color, which is dedicated to SNP calling and genotyping from low-depth sequencing data, leveraging population level genotype frequencies. And we obtained a first raw matrix with seven, uh, 68, 69 millions of SNPs, and we figured out to obtain a final SNP matrix with almost 4 million SNPs within Quercus chromosomes. And for example, we figured out rare, rare SNPs and SNPs within transposable elements. Then from this matrix, we looked at the SNP distribution along Quercus rubber genome. Here on the plot, we, represented, we have represented the 12th chromosome of Quercus genome. And here in the y-axis, we have the number of SNPs in windows of 100 KB. As you can see on this plot, we have few missing regions for our SNP matrix. And on average, we have 500 SNPs per windows of 100 KB. And overall, 95% of windows have at least 50 SNPs. Then we estimated the distance in basis over which linkage disequilibrium decays in our 72 individuals. And we performed SNP pairwise correlation within windows of 50 KB. And we obtained on average a R square below 0 02, which corresponds to no correlation after 2000 bases. We also computed LD blocks, and we obtained that 90% of LD block size quantile was below 1,162 bases. We compared our results with another uh, results obtained from a recent published paper, where they computed the leakage disequilibrium of decay uh, for pedocolic oak population in Britain, and they obtained a LD decay at 500 bases and a 90% block size uh, below 5,000 bases. These two results uh, 
can we can say that from these two results for the these two species we have low leakage disequilibrium and maybe we can explain the difference by the fact that we have different species and different study population however these two results confirm that 5 million SNPs obtained from low death sequencing would be sufficient to capture more genetic variation then we studied the population structure within 72 individuals from nine provenances, and we performed a principal component analysis using 232,000 unclicked SNPs. And on the plot here, you can see that the 72 individuals are not structured in groups, so revealing no population structure and no genome-wide differentiation between provenances. This result is consistent with previous estimates of population differentiation from pulse sequencing. And for GWAS, this may limit confounding and reduce full positive association due to population structure. Then we investigate if specialized metabolite variation is shaped by genetics, and we computed pseudo heritability, a so called SNP based heritability for all pseudo molecules. Pseudo-heritability, pseudo sorry for here, here, is the phenotypic variance explained by genome-wide kinship among 72 trees. And we computed this for 287 submolecules, and we obtained this distribution represented on, on this plot with the variance explained in the x-axis. And we can see that we have a clear bimodal distribution of the variance explained. Also, overall 77% of pseudomolecules have a variance explained greater than 0.75. We performed uh, GWAS with pseudomolecules with high variance explained. And for, for example, for one of the peak, or one of the pseudomolecules, we found a significant association peak within the chromosome number six within a phosphoglycerate mutase. Note that we didn't go um, further uh, the analysis of these GWAS because, as I said, we have only 72 individuals out, out of the 225. However, this example is confronting uh, for the next GWAS with the 225 individuals that I will be very happy to present to you next time. Then, to conclude, we observed phenotypic variation within provenances that can be explained by uh, genetic variation among individuals, and we found no population structure that will reduce for positive association. And also, we have short LD blocks that we will give us a high resolution detection for the next GWAS. Also, our results suggest that specialized metabolites may be not locally adaptive in our uh, populations. And overall, GWAS should, be, should allow us to identify the genetic basis underlying less specialized metabolite variation in orcs populations and help understand their adaptive value and their evolutionary history. So briefly, I want just to thank all the contributors for my project, uh, Bordeaux Metabolome, University Bordeaux, Biogeco, INRAI, and also at Green Skills and Clermont-Ferrand. And then to finish, thank you uh, for your attention.